Thanks, Sly. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not used to your professional look. I got to be used to that. <laughs> uh, name is uh, Steve My Network, uh, and I am the founder of Prince Lewis College. Um, I am a 33 year of the design industry, now turned uh, full time educator. Jarvis? I'm Jar yeah, I'm Jarvis Sam. It's a great pleasure to be here. So thank you to the Edelman team and to the VidCon team for having us. Uh, Jarvis Sam, my pronouns are he, him, and his. And I probably serve as the Vice President for Global Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at Nike. Ms. Cheryl. Hi, everybody. I'm Cheryl Kern, and I'm Vice President, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at um, now Miller, no, formerly Herman Miller. Right. and uh, lead the organization and have the great opportunity to partner with, with everyone to move the agenda forward. Great, great. Before we get into this great conversation that we're gonna have today, I think that there was a poll that was taken. If we could throw that up there. I don't see the poll. Not yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I know the poll here um, actually was about Gen Zers and the characteristics uh, that are most critical to when it comes to them choosing a college. And so with the four uh, choices up there, we polled out. And hopefully, because I can't see it, uh, the, the answer is probably already up there. Um, and that is C, that 53% of college age Gen Zers say the school um, that prepares them to be successful in their future careers most critical to them, right? And I think this is what is really going to push the conversation um, that we're going to have here today. All right, so the poll results from the audience are in, and it looks like 67% uh, said that they would like to be in charge of what they learn, right? And I think this is going to really uh, catapult the discussion that we're going to have here. I think first off, uh, Dwayne, let me let me throw a question to you. I know a lot of people know about Pencil. Pencil has been around for, for many years. I think the thing that people aren't familiar with is Pencil Lewis College of Business and Design. So can you briefly just kind of walk us through what PLC is and how it came about? Yes, so Pencil Lewis College is the merger of uh, once, once founded historically black college by an amazing black woman by the name of Violet T. Lewis um, back in 1923. She founded this school as a secretary school uh, because black women were not allowed to work in offices. And she was very instrumental in um, guiding you know, black professionals in corporate, you know, corporate offices like Michigan Bell, General Motors, Ford, and others. Um, but I think one of, one of her more significant achievements that she never got a chance to actually see because she passed away in 1968 is that 1987 the lewis college was um, was was anointed a historically black college um, the only one in the state of michigan and unfortunately the, the school closed in 2013 and when i learned about the college i learned about it about a year ago and it really discovered Pilot Lewis's story, and, and I saw the parallels between, you know, how I went into got into the industry and why I started people. And I felt it was important for the idea of design to be told at a larger scale. And so I reached out to the family, Lewis family, and shared my intentions of what it would be like to create, you know, the first historically black pilot focused on design. And and they loved the and. and to merge institutions. And, and so Pinto Lewis College Business and Design is is what we're talking about today. And then, you know, our goal is to be the first HPQ focused on design. I love it. I love it. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people here that, that's watching that are creatives and some people that are business minded and so now it's taking pencil and being able to combine the two so that people can get the best of both worlds. Uh, so Absolutely. that I know I'm excited about. So Cheryl, uh, when did you first hear about uh, this school? And I know Miller Knoll is, is a, a partner in this school. So what gets yourself and Miller Knoll excited uh, about this partnership with the school? 
Yeah, I'll say that I um, I first heard about it. I've only been with the company since January. And so right when I came in, we were starting to talk about this emerging relationship with, with Dwayne. And I have to tell you, excited is a really great word slide because I really felt not only excited, but hopeful. You know, I think if we all think back to when we were growing up, it was always that access to opportunity. And I feel like this is really going to give a lot of, you know, young people that access to opportunity that they wouldn't have had before. I think I'm also doubly excited because me and my husband are from Detroit. So there's a lot of personal pride that also goes into seeing this come back alive because we can remember when the college was closing down. Um, so, you know, really big hopes for Dwayne, and we really are glad to partner with him. But I think of all of the young black students that have the opportunity now to have access that they didn't before. Um, and I'm really hopeful that under Dwayne's leadership, we're really gonna see this thing really take off and be a success and make a real difference in the community. Nice, nice. Jarvis, I know that Nike has been a partner with Dwayne and Penso for many years, right? And so mm -hmm. now as the expansion happens of the school and the programs that they're gonna offer, what excites you the most about this partnership? Uh, and its expansion. Yeah, you know, Sly, we at Nike, we've done some work in, in the ad space for a couple of years. And one of which that's most relevant that I'm certain that this audience knows about is the work we've done with Colin Kaepernick and Serena Williams around Dream Crazier. Mm -hmm. And it, it tends to conclude with this idea that it's only a crazy dream until you do it. And then, of course, Nike, just do it. Dwayne and I had this conversation about this idea several years ago. So I've been at Nike now for about three and a half years and week two on the job, I had the great pleasure of meeting D-Wang. And, you know, we vibe very quickly about what he's interested in working on, the future that we want to build within the design and product creation space. And to see the great impact that he had built as a Nike and Jordan alum in establishing Pencil Design Academy in downtown Portland and seeing that significantly expand, it was clear that this was something that we had to be a part of. Fast forward several years, Nike has had an ongoing commitment to historically black colleges and universities for a number of years. But in March of this year, as part of our impact report, we set some 2025 goals, what we call our purpose targets. And one of those is a $10 million commitment over the next five years in support of historically black colleges and universities and Hispanic serving institutions. So when I got the text from Dee, probably a couple of months ago at this point saying, like, the dream crazy idea is the reality it's happening. Things are going. Uh, I, I replied to him just not only how overjoyed and ecstatic I was, but how proud I am of this work. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the first conversations Dee and I had was the, the challenges with access and opportunity and how it's often termed as a pipeline challenge for black communities integration and impact into the design space. Over the last three years, through programs like Nike by Design, the Serena Williams Design Crew, D has come in and spoke with our Win Fellows from the WNBA, we've made game-changing impact together, something that Nike certainly couldn't do without Pencil's guidance and push on being able to impact the lives of, to date, more than 35 amazing designers from a variety of dimensions of diversity to enter the space. You didn't take that and put that with the horsepower of Pencil Lewis, the sky's the limit with what's going to be the potential of this work. So I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm, here at Edelman, we're, we're just as excited about this and this opportunity to kind of team up with, you know, not only Dwayne in the school, but other companies such as the Nikes and the Blanoles of the world. So um, I'm going to skip around. I know there was another question I was supposed to ask before this, but Dwayne, uh, I think outside of this being the first HBCU to actually reopen, which is, is historic, I think one of the things that, that I've learned with all of this is that the school will be, if not completely free, but almost completely free for the students to attend. Uh, so tell me about that. And why is that uh, the mission that you have with setting out for the school to provide a free education to students? Yeah, thank you. That was the mission when we founded Pennsylvania over 11 years ago. And, and that was the fact that I was, I grew up in Inglewood, California, youngest of six kids raised by single parents. And so when it was time for me to, to even think about college, it really, it really wasn't an option for me because we just didn't have the finances to, to even send me to think about college. 
Now, I was still blessed enough to, to get an, an opportunity in the industry at a really young age, but there's so many other people that I've seen over the years that just gave up. They gave up on the opportunities because of the, the passion that they had for this skill of, of creativity and design, but they didn't see a pathway for themselves. And so I don't, when, when, when we created that, so I didn't want that to be a barrier. I didn't want finances to get in, in the way of moving up on their dreams. And so when we found it, so we, we created a new model that we partnered with organizations with the idea of them helping fund the students' education with the idea of putting them in position for internship opportunities or even full-time employment opportunities. And so once we started doing that and seeing the companies in the industry started seeing the results of that partnership, then the relationships start to build and grow. And, and then therefore, you know, these people gave up on their, uh, their dreams and started to revisit those dreams because they saw that they could actually have a home at Pencil. And as we move forward with PLC, we, we want to carry forward the same thing that we started over 11 years ago, where we're still going to provide the majority of our programming is going to be free for students as we as we relate to brand sponsored programs that we established. Yeah, I know as we talk about like education, right? These are momentous things like going to school for free, being a first HBCU that's structured around design itself. Uh, talk to me about some of the other things that's very unique about Pencil Lewis, like uh, the courses that will be taught, who will be teaching them, and then kind of just the ultimate goal that you have for PLC. Yeah, I would, I would say it's a little bit close to the answer that the people gave, 67%, where what we're calling, we're referring to ourselves as, as the culture path, where we're teaching culturally relevant career path, what they traditionally can't learn at other learning institutions throughout the world. And those of those Bear paths are footwear design, sneakers, if you want to call it that, uh, functional apparel and accessory design, color and material design, where you know kids still get surprised when you tell them that people get paid just to color shoes all day long. <laughs> and you know, like I'm sure people do that for free right now. That's the idea, and that's what I do now. But that's a real job. And, and so as we start to introduce these jobs and these careers that are really hidden in plain sight, when we peel back the curtain or open the box to ask you what the opportunities are to these things that we have in their closet, they wear on their, their bodies, they drive, you know, that, that they have in their homes, it's just opening up the world of possibility. And so we, we teach more culturally relevant careers that most, like I said, most people didn't realize it was actually a job and you can get paid really well for it, by the way. Yeah, I think what's unique about the school too, right, is uh, terms, like yep. how long you're there, how the coursework uh, is taught. Can you, can you walk me through that a little bit? Yeah, so what we're doing is, I guess people say that we, we just brought education right now because we're, we're almost doing the opposite of traditional college and universities where it's free to get in, um, our, 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 we have shorter programs that are more intensive. They're a bit more like extended job internships where we put students in the exact same work environment that they would actually work in, but they're learning in this actual environment. So we can do in, in three months what a, nor a normal student would do over the course of one full year. So you can work with us over the course of one full year and be completely finished with your bachelor's degree. So we're really condensing the coursework, making it more effective, designing it to work according to the corporations that we work with. So the student can now get placed in those corporations with the idea of reducing the break-in period, right? So when you, when you go to work at a corporation, especially in design or creative fields, you usually have to spend some time getting used to the function and what the job is. But if you're learning that, when it's time for employment, you come right in and start to work. So we're, we're changing the way education is from that perspective. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised that students didn't say, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty surprised three wasn't high in, in that number. Um, and then I'm also surprised like the length and the duration of time that they spend in college wasn't there as well. 
and then uh, the third part is the opportunity for them to get placed in a real career that they've actually went to school to learn. Yeah, I think that's, that, that last point is a good point, right? I know we've had plenty of conversations of like, not only will uh, corporations be helping to shape the curriculum, but uh, internships and placement. Uh, yes. I think I'm surprised that wasn't uh, high on the poll list there too, right? Because everybody kind of wants to land the, a dream job, right? So I know one thing that's important to a lot of people that, that's probably watching this conversation is personal journeys. Right, Jarvis. I know a lot of people want to know, like, how do I get to Nike? Right, uh, Cheryl. How do I get to How do I get to Miller Knoll? Um, Dwayne. Like, how do I have a, a long-standing design career? Right, and I know all of these things are constantly changing. But if if all three of you could kind of share um, a little bit about your journey, but also just kind of from the inside out, giving people perspective of what it takes to kind of land that that dream job. Sure, ladies first. I'll start out. I'll start out and just kind of briefly say that. Um, and I know I talked earlier about access to opportunity. Um, we have an opportunity to really better educate everyone around our brand and who we are. We're still a little bit of an unknown to a lot of kids, to a lot of students, and so that's one thing we're really focused on right now. You know, we are we are not with full respect. We are not Nike and we recognize that, but we certainly want to be more well known. And so we're spending a lot of our time saying, how do we connect more fully with communities of color? How do we actually elevate our brand so that they know who we are? And as importantly, once we do that, then what's the intentional and strategic outreach that we put in place to make sure that the talent that we find can be mentored and coached and that we can retain them? So there's a big focus on that right now within our within our uh, company. I would also say that just to sort of um, attracting the talent and keeping the talent, something as simple as the space in which we all learn. I can remember being in college and how great it was to go into an inclusive space. And so as we're partnering with Duane, that's part of our focus is what is the experience that the student is going to have when they step into the Pencil Academy as we equip them with hopefully what they'll feel like is really inviting inclusive learning environments that will then motivate them to give their best and then show up in the workplace for us when we go to recruit them as really top-notch talent so yeah yeah and on the nike side you know as i look at the results to see that nearly a third of you all highlighted is the idea of safety in the space yeah. that you're entering, in the collegiate environment that matters the most. This is something that is so top of mind for us at Nike around how we think about talent and candidate journey. And then ultimately when you're an employee here, here's the, the short story. In terms of my personal journey, I spent about 10 years working in the technology industry. And I saw numerous endeavors around connecting with historically black colleges and universities and Hispanic serving institutions, which drove front end pipeline to get people through the door. What wasn't a felt experience, though, is what happens when people are here? Are we asking people to assimilate into a culture that is so uniquely different than that of the experience of growing up Black in this country or globally? That is where a shift has to happen, and that's something that we're so heavily focused on at Nike. By prioritizing transparency, visibility, and accountability in what we do, and ensuring that we have partners along that journey with us, like D. Wayne and Pencil, to ensure that we're authentically crafting a new narrative, that's how we push the agenda forward. It's been a point that I've been incredibly impressed by by this industry because there is such an openness to that conversation. Given that the Black community has played such a critical role in building how we think about advertising, marketing, and of course, particularly in the space of footwear and apparel, it is critical that we think of authentic engagement. Where I think this work is going to be game-changing, as Dwayne described, it's the practical application. Look, you can go through a variety of traditional programs. You can go through a variety of other alternative programs for collegiate degrees in education and learn a ton of theoretical frameworks. I was a history major. I use some of that use most of that. And so it's the critical thinking skills and application that, that are impactful. But as I hear Dwayne describe this experience of a one-year intensive where you're actually learning and gaining great insights that essentially creates on-the-job training paired with academic exposure and development, 
that's a mix that I think will start to create a model that not only other universities will attempt to look at going forward, but when I think about it from the lens of a company perspective, if I have the opportunity to connect with some amazing students, whether in professional programs, in community colleges, or even fresh out of high school, and know that they then have the opportunity to go to Pencil Lewis and be trained in an ethos that is aligned to the way Nike views design and how we craft our own approach, not only is that significant and topical, but when I think about that impact of the historical and sociocultural relevance of this being an HBCU, and what's more, named after a Black woman HBCU, yeah, that's, right. that, that's where we start to have real game-changing impact. You know, Sly, to, to then return to your initial question on personal journey, my journey has been one where there's been points of failure and points of opportunity, but where it's led me to is a job that I happily say, I believe I have the best job in the world because I get to partner with individuals like Dwayne to take an industry that our people built and start to finally give back to the community through economic empowerment, education, and access. And that's a differentiator. That's right. And, and I would just chime in and add one other thing. I think we are at a point in history we all full well have to acknowledge. If not us who, and if not now when, we always hear that. Right. But I think yeah. even more than ever now, we cannot let this moment escape any of us. And I think we all have a personal as well as a corporate responsibility. Yeah. Shame on us if we let this pass. Right. Yep. yep. You know, Dwayne, before, before I throw it back to you, I think <clears throat> one of the things I'm most excited about this, right, is the time, right? I, I know so many friends and, and, and homies that the reason they're like, oh, school just ain't for me. I mean, I just did, you know, 12 years of school and now you're asking me to go do another four or another five. Right. Like it, it seems like a lot, right? And the financial restraints seem like a lot. So I think I'm excited to see how people, um, adapt to the new model and, and, and see the success and see the possibilities. So um, I think the other thing is, Dwayne, we're starting to have a lot of audience questions come in. So I'll throw it to yeah. you uh, just kind of on the personal piece of, yeah. of what this means to you, this, this school. Um, this, is, this is me as my 17 year old self writing my own pathway and taking to what I want my future to look like. And I wasn't able to do that as a 17 year old kid, but I've worked hard in this industry to be able to do that now for all of the people that I'll probably never meet. Um, but also more important for my children, you know, I have young daughters that are carving their own pathway out. And I hope that what, what we've been able to do over the years and the investment we've been able to have within other youth in their lives that my kids are getting that back in their educational pursuits as well. So I'm a big believer in karma that way. Um, but this is this is everything I wish I, I wish I would have had as a 17 year old kid growing up in Inglewood. And and this will no longer be a problem. And so now once we clear this pathway, then you know sky's the limit. You know my my goal when I entered this industry was to leave it when I was before, better than one. And that's been my focus ever since I started in 1989. And, and this is just a continuation of that journey. You know, so I'll just add, you know, after seeing Dwayne's story and, and when being invited to this panel, I, was, I wanted to think about the words to share with Dwayne. And I think the, the story based narrative he just described, it, it's exactly what I've been thinking. D, coming into this work, your you unclear as a 17 year old around what your career journey would look like for me that was your prologue your experience with nike and jordan and designing footwear that has played on every basketball arena and every football field in this nation that's your story pencil lewis is your epilogue it's what you're leaving for the world it's what you're leaving for students it's the visual that's being created that black kids can do so much more beyond the stylized boxes we have been told that we're placed in. Mm. Absolutely mm -hmm. agree. Thank you for that. I love it all. I love it all. <clears throat> to the audience, we're going to open it up for questions. I see we already got a couple that have been coming through already. Uh, Dwayne, I'm going to throw the first question at you. Can you be any age to join the school or do I have to be right out of high school? 
You have to be at least 18. Now, what you do after that, uh, age doesn't matter. Uh, talent is most important. But if you're under 18, that creates more problems for us. So we, we, can't, we can't have you under 18. But, but we are creating high school programming, though, in which is really critical to our success because that development reaching me when I was 17 years old is super critical. And so in order for us to start to dream bigger, to, to Jarvis's point, pretty, if, if in order for us to start seeing ourselves being successful without a ball or a microphone in our hands, we have to introduce opportunities earlier. And so creating middle school programming and then creating high school programming that actually you can receive college credit for while you're in high school is going to be really critical for the pipeline of opportunity for kids to just to see what the possibilities are. So at least 18 for now, but we, we are we are working toward high school programming and then middle school programming. We, we had to start at first because we had to build the destination for them to come to. And now we're going up. So next next journey is high school, it's middle school, um, and then even elementary. I, I love it. Uh, I know that you said 18, but if there's people on here that are a little older, you know, 30s, 40s, that are looking for career changes, this is open to them too. Talent is uh, talent. That's right, that's right. Um, how are you able to make this free? It sounds so amazing. I know we hit on it a little bit earlier, but Dwayne, if you could you could touch on it one more time. I mean, it's, it's corporate partners like Miller no corporate partners like Nike, where they have a vested interest in the success of the student that's attending the college. And that vested interest is for them to become future employees. And the idea of just investing into that future employee in a different way being a part of their educational journey to end up as a corporation, like to me, that makes the most sense, right? Where it's it's really the corporation understanding that their consumer has the ability to become a contributor to their organization. And they're basically putting their money where the company is and investing in the people that they want to see work at their organization. Right, right. Another question from the audience, how can people or consumers on a more individual basis invest in young, diverse talent and support institutions like PLC. Cheryl. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually happy to chime in there. So, you know, one of the endeavors that we worked on in partnership with D Wayne and team is the Serena Williams Design Crew. So it is an initiative that we've launched in partnership with the athlete herself, Serena, around getting more students of color and individuals of color into the design space. We send them on a three week journey at the very beginning of their experience to pencil to understand the fundamentals of this work and experience. So that's the corporate partner side of it. Coming out of their then six month experience with Nike, they then produce a consumer facing product. And so they created a, a footwear, apparel and equipment line that's in the name of and inspired of the athlete Serena, the greatest uh, tennis player of all time. That's one way to think about it understanding the journey that these individuals went on. This is the first time that we've had a group of apprentices come together to create an athlete inspired collection that's going to market and is actually generating revenue from that perspective. Continuing to invest in how we think about what their careers are, talent identification, talent engagement, and then ultimately leveraging the power of our networks and experiences to then spread the word from a talent attraction and recruitment marketing perspective for Penn Soul Lewis is gonna be critical. Furthermore, November 30th, it's Giving Tuesday, national recognition for how we can support national nonprofits. Mm -hmm. I highly encourage anyone that's watching, find nonprofits, find organizations similar to Dwayne's that are doing the work and identify various areas where you can contribute. In some areas, it's financial. If you have access to career opportunities at your own job or corporation, ensure that those students at Pencil Lewis have access to that. And then finally, your own time, volunteerism. Come to watch the design presentations of these students. I've learned more just by seeing the rigor and intensity that D. Wayne and team uh, put the, the students through throughout their experience and seeing their growth journey and what they produce. So a variety of different ways. 
Yeah, and I would just add, there's no one silver bullet. He's right. There's a variety of different ways. You know, we launched the Diversity in Design Initiative, uh, which is a collection of now we're up to close to 50 different companies that all said we must change this narrative and go from this 5% or less representation of Black talent in the field of design and at least get it up to to national representation levels. So it's going to really take all of us taking a series of really personalized steps um, in small ways. It doesn't have to just be the really, really big things. You know, it can be community advocates that are going into high schools and making students aware that pencil exists. It can be donating to nonprofits, as was just mentioned. Um, So through DID, what we're really trying to do at Miller No is to bring together the best and the brightest from all these different corporations to say, how can we go about with intentionality to help to really give back and to really foster this next talent pipeline that we need? Yeah, I I agree with everybody on the panel here. And and I think support and mentorship is always a big thing, right? Uh, I think for me, I was was very fortunate that uh, at a young age, Dwayne uh, lent his support to me. Uh, and, and help me uh, understand what the industry was, right? So I think the more we can do that and uplift uh, the younger generation, uh, whether they are getting into the workforce or already at a company that you're at, I think supporting them, mentoring them, and helping them reach the next level is always going to be critical and important, right? All right, so I know we got maybe like three minutes left. Dwayne, um, the thing that I want to end on here is anyone who wants to be a PLC student, What's the best way for them to get information and apply? Right now, the easiest way is to go to pencil.com and, and sign up for our newsletter. We, we will be announcing our first programs early after the first of the year. Um, so we want to reserve that for a nice moment. Um, so we're, we're right now, we're just gathering insights and information for people who log on um, and tell us a bit like what it's never percent says is tell us what you want to do. What do you want to learn? What are the careers and opportunities you want for your career? Um, but right now, pencil.com is linked to our mailing list. Cool, cool. Well, as we're wrapping up here, I just want to thank uh, all of our speakers today, Jarvis Sams from Nike, Ms. Cheryl Kern from Illinois, and of course, Dr. Dwayne Edwards from the Pencil Lewis College of Business and Design. I hope everyone got as much out of this as I did. Uh, and any questions, comments, concerns, any of those things, I'm sure that uh, there's an email that we'll all be able to send those to. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Fazer. Thank you. Yeah.